Uncrust Canada of Cardiosource to review the 10 points to remember from the new ACC AHA guideline on lifestyle management to reduce cardiovascular risk. We start off with uh, key point number one, that the 2013 ACC AHA expert work group's intent was to evaluate evidence that particular dietary patterns, nutrient intake, and levels and types of physical activity can play a major role in cardiovascular disease prevention and treatment through effects on modifiable cardiovascular risk factors. The evidence statements and recommendations are presented by critical questions and grouped by topic in three critical areas. A, among adults, what is the effect of dietary patterns and or macronutrient composition on cardiovascular disease risk factors when compared to no treatment or other types of interventions? B, among adults, what is the effect of dietary intake of sodium and potassium on cardiovascular risk factors and outcomes when compared to no treatment or other types of interventions? And C, among adults, what is the effect of physical activity on blood pressure and lipids when compared to no treatment or other types of interventions? Key point two, dietary recommendations to lower low-density lipoprotein cholesterol or LDL cholesterol include consumption of diet high in vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. Dairy products should be low-fat. Fish, legumes, and poultry were recommended sources of protein. Vegetable oils and nuts provide healthy type of oils. Limitation of sugar-sweetened beverages and red meats was recommended. There is insufficient evidence to determine whether low glycemic diets versus high glycemic diets affect lipids or blood pressure for adults without diabetes. The evidence uh, for this relationship in adults with diabetes was not reviewed. Three, additional recommendations to lower LDLC include a dietary pattern that achieves 5 to 6% of calories from saturated fat. Reduction in trans fat was also recommended. Four, this dietary pattern should be adapted for appropriate calorie requirements personal and cultural food preferences, and nutrition therapy for other medical conditions. This dietary pattern can be achieved by following the DASH dietary pattern, the USDA food pattern, or the AHA diet. Key point five, dietary recommendations to lower blood pressure are similar to those for LDLC lowering, with added recommendations for sodium intake. Consumption of no more than 2,400 milligrams of sodium per day is recommended. Further reduction of sodium intake to 1,500 milligrams a day is associated with even greater reduction in blood pressure and is recommended if achievable by the patient. Six, for blood pressure lowering, if recommended goals for sodium are not obtainable, reducing sodium intake by at least 1,000 milligrams per day lowers blood pressure. A reduction in sodium intake by approximately 1,000 milligrams per day reduces cardiovascular disease events by approximately 30%. Seven, combining the DASH dietary pattern with lower sodium intake is recommended for lowering blood pressure. Eight, recommendations to improve lipids with physical activity were also provided. This included regular aerobic physical activity three to four sessions a week, lasting on average 40 minutes per session, and involving moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. This level of physical activity can reduce both LDL and non-high-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Nine, recommendations to improve blood pressure include the same level and duration of physical activity. Again, this included aerobic activity three to four sessions a week, lasting on average 40 minutes per session, 
and involving moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. And 10, the DASH dietary pattern is beneficial for a wide range of subgroups, including women and men, African-American and non-African-American adults, older and younger adults, and hypertensive and non-hypertensive in lowering blood pressure. A similar pattern is observed for LDLC, lowering for African-Americans and non-African-American adults, and for hypertensive and non-hypertensive adults. As you can see, this is a comprehensive guideline looking at lifestyle management, and hopefully implementation of these guidelines will help improve cardiovascular risk factors. So for CardioSource, on behalf of uh, Dr. Jackson, who prepared these 10 points, I'm Chris Cannon.